In this video, we're going to look at the second derivative of an implicit function. We've had a look in a few examples on how to find the first derivative of an implicit function. And so here we're going to work out what happens if we need to find the second derivative. And in some ways, it seems fairly natural that we just differentiate the, the function that we found for dy by dx. And that is something that we can do, and we will do. I want to just highlight the fact that there's also a second strategy, and that's to actually start the differentiation, second differentiation, before or at a point, kind of part of the way through the working. Okay, we we do need always to know dy by dx, but to find the second derivative, it may be easier to start or to take uh, the expression further up rather than the actual finished function. I'll explain that. In fact, I'll do this example in two uh, different ways. So in this example 26, we've got the function 3x minus 6y plus xy equals 0. So to find the first derivative, I would differentiate both sides in the normal way. I'm just indicating here that I'm going to be differentiating with respect to x and not y, which means that when we do our differentiation, uh, the first expression, 3x, differentiates to 3. The second one, negative 6y, differentiates to negative 6 dy by dx. And my third expression here is a wee bit um, more involved. I've got my uh, product rule that I have to think about, and you may be doing these kind of things at the site, so it's a good thing uh, to think about. The product rule says that the first term is u, second term is v, so the derivative is going to be u dash, a derivative of uh, x, which is 1, multiplied by v, which is y, and then we also have the plus u, which is x, v dash or derivative of y which is dy by dx or 1 times dy by dx. So I've got my expression here plus y plus x dy by dx as my product rule expression and then on the right hand side the derivative of 0 is 0. So, what do we have here? We're trying to arrange in terms of dy by dx. We have two dy by dx terms. We have x times dy by dx. And then we have minus 6 dy by dx. And on the other side of the equation, we'll put everything that doesn't have a dy by dx multiplier. And that is, uh, we've got 3 and we've got y. They become negative y and negative 3. We can take a common factor, dy by dx, and then we've got x minus 6 equals negative y minus 3, which means that dy by dx is negative y minus 3 over x minus 6. Okay, We could uh, we could rewrite that in a different way to change the negatives uh, around. Uh, one way would be to take a common factor of negative 1 from the numerator and just make it negative y plus 3 over x minus 6. Okay. We could do something like that, or we could flip the whole end. Something like that would be the derivative dy by dx. And we're going to need that. We're going to be substituting that in a little bit later. So we'll hang on to that. So the normal way you might think in order to find the second derivative would just be to find the derivative of that. We've got divided by dx first derivative, which means the second derivative d2y by dx squared that would, we would have to employ the quotient rule for this. We have a fraction and you would be right. So let's think about the quotient rule says u dash v minus u v dash over v squared. If you're using that uh, form there. 
what have we got? U is negative y minus 3, and V is 6 minus x. So du by dx is going to be negative 1 y, dy by dx. So it's negative dy by dx, and dv by dx is just going to be 1 which means that our second derivative is u dash v, so negative dy by dx times x minus 6, negative, I'll put negative x minus 6 dy by dx, minus, I'm just going to move this over a wee bit, minus u v dash, so we've got negative y minus 3 multiplied by 1, so we've got negative y minus 3 multiplied by 1 all over v squared, which is x minus 6 squared. So what we have to do here to simplify it, we have a dy by dx term in this numerator, which we have to substitute with what we've actually found out up above in the yellow. It's not as bad as it sounds, because if you notice, we've got an x minus 6 multiplier, and we've got an x minus 6 in our denominator here. And we can simplify it to plus y plus 3 multiplying out that bracket. Still got x minus 6 squared. So we've substituted in this expression here up above in for dy by dx. So I've everything's in terms of y and x. If you notice on this expression here, the x minus 6, which is multiplying, cancels with the x minus 6, which is dividing, which leaves me, I've still got the negative sign at the front there. So it leaves me with negative, negative y minus 3 plus y plus 3 over x minus 6 squared. Those negatives multiply make that y plus 3 plus y plus 3 over x minus 6 squared, which gives me 2y plus 6 over x minus 6 squared. And that, because we've nearly forgotten what we're doing, is the second derivative. Okay. So we found our first dy by dx, and then now we've found our second derivative, d2y by dx squared. So that's one way to do it, and that one was not bad. We had a, a reasonably straightforward uh, fraction to deal with. We had a, like a rational function there, one function on top of the other. Or we could use the quotient rule. Sometimes the, the derivatives, once you rearrange them, are a bit weird. And in actual fact, you might want to avoid doing that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can do the second derivative in a different way. And that is, once we get to this point here of finding dy by dx, and think, okay, let's not do it this way, let's not just differentiate that. What we're going to do is we're going to take it back to when it was still in a big straight line. We're going to take it back to this point here. Okay, what we're going to do is I am going to copy that. put it on the next page and paste it. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to imagine that we've worked out uh, dy by dx, which is further down, uh, negative y minus 3 over x minus 6. Negative y minus 3 
think it's worked it out, but we are choosing not to differentiate from that point. We're going to differentiate, actually, this expression here. In other words, we're going to differentiate for a second time, um, and this is going to be what I'm going to differentiate. Okay, so there's no reason why we have to differentiate just when it's dy by dx. We can do a second differentiation before we've rearranged it. And the reason why that's sometimes helpful is that the some of the, the expressions are a bit simpler at this stage. So let's see uh, how this works out. We're differentiating with respect to x, so 3 becomes 0, uh, negative 60y by dx becomes, because now we're now, this is a function, in, uh, an expression in y, dy by dx, the derivative of dy by dx is the second derivative, and so we write that as d2y by dx squared, so it's negative 6 d2y by dx squared. The next term is plus y, and that differentiates to plus 1 times dy by dx as normal. And this last expression here is a product rule function. So the derivative of x times dy by dx is my u term. This is my v term. So the derivative using the product rule differentiate the first term. That's 1 times dy by dx plus x times differentiate the second term, which is d2y by dx squared. If we differentiate dy by dx, we get the second derivative. So my derivative is simply dy by dx plus x d2y by dx squared. Once you get used to these second derivatives, it's not as um, odd as it might seem at first. So there's my product rule expression and on the right hand side I've just got equals zero okay so that's my differentiated expression and this time a bit like with our first derivative what we're trying to do is to rearrange it so that the left hand side just says d2y by dx squared so we just want the second derivative on the left, so we keep those ones on the left. We've got x d2y by dx squared minus 6 d2y by dx squared equals, and take the other things over to the other side, which happen to be our first derivatives. We've got two of them here. 2 dy by dx will on the other side become negative 2 dy by dx. Take a common factor on the left hand side we've got x minus 6 now on the right hand side we still have to do a substitution that we did earlier on dy by dx we have determined is this thing up in the top right hand corner so we do still have to substitute that in negative y minus 3 over x minus 6 and that gives us negative 2 times negative y plus 3 over x minus 6. And if we were to just consider the second derivative on its own, we would divide through by x minus 6, which gives us a second x minus 6 factor on the denominator, which would give us x minus 6 squared which gives us overall uh, the expression uh, 2y plus 6 over x minus 6, all squared, which happens to be exactly the same as we found doing it the other way. So there are two different ways. That way might seem slightly more unusual because of all the second derivatives. But you might find, and I would encourage you to tr try and find uh, ways to do that. When you look at the first derivative and think, 
that's going to be a wee bit tricky to differentiate from there. Try and take it back a few steps and see if you can differentiate it when it's all still in one uh, big equation or in a line. Okay, I'll leave that with you and see how you get on.